Hello there. It's Sunday afternoon. It's 2 p.m. It's time to call the A team. Maybe it's a C team. <laughs> people say it sounds like I'm playing with gloves on. <laughs> That's what it really does sound like when I play with gloves on. Uh, welcome to Quarantine Gigs with myself Sandy Brookin. Today dressed as Hannibal Smith from the A-Team. The original Hannibal that is uh, George E. Pepper, not uh, Liam Neeson. Well Liam did a passable job in the awful remake. Uh, nobody can quite carry it off like uh, George E. Pepper. And uh, well that's a real cigar by the way. I was almost going to keep it in the original tube because uh, I was worried about starting smoking again. It's been five years now. I thought just the taste of uh, tobacco leaf in my uh, gob might uh, set me off. But no, it was okay. So I took the risk and it worked out fine. And um, this is actually a cigar. I don't know if you can see that. It says, uh, oops, there we go. Amaya y Bedran. And that's my friend, uh, friends, um, Amaya from Spain and Bedran from uh, Croatia. Uh, sorry, uh, Bosnia, who got married. It says the 20th of April uh, 2002, 20th of April, that's tomorrow, 2002, and that's that was when they got married in Spain. I was actually there in a wonderful uh, place called uh, Santander, they named, it's so nice they named the bank after it. And uh, it was a fantastic wedding, that was one of the nicest days I ever had. It was also my birthday, because tomorrow is my birthday. It's going to be really exciting here with just me and Toki the dog. But Toki here, I don't know if you can see Toki, my little stand just broke literally a second before I was about to go on stage. Here's Toki, he'll get animated if I wave this in front of him. Look, look at his tail going, oh yes, he's going for it. Okay, we'll get, we'll get more of that later, Toki, thank you. Anyway, uh, on with the show. So, oops, wait a minute. First of all, it's time for a refreshing Hannibal type drink. Nothing else to do on a Sunday. Uh, now, uh, yes, the A team, uh, that's the theme for today's show. Um, not that there's going to be very much else about it, there's not much, much else I can do apart from shoot lots of people that, that don't actually die So, because uh, that's what always happens in the A-team or build the things out of bits of rubbish. I've been doing a lot of that this week actually. Um, I actually built this out of bits of rubbish. Look at this, <laughs> I found this bit. Look, it looks amazing. I'm going to call it the accordion. Uh, yes, a friend of mine, very good friend, uh, Richie Werner. Hello Richie in b and Studios where I spend uh, half my life quite happily uh, in Richie's studio recording or producing albums in uh, in Pilrig Street in Leith. I haven't seen him for a while. <laughs> that was one of the last jobs I was supposed to do before lockdown. Uh, but uh, hopefully we'll see each other again soon. Anyway, Richie always used to joke here, Richie's a drummer, and uh, sometimes I would call on him in hours of need, and he always joked that if he was getting a call, uh, it wasn't even the B team lineup of the Cayley band, it was the C team, the C team. So today's, today's theme is the C team. Um, now we're going to start off with uh, a set of fast wheels that uh, I used to play in my folk rock band Buruch and uh, th there's two, fi two fantastic fiddlers that uh, in recent years have uh, played with me, uh, Gavin Marwick and uh, Gregor Borland. Uh, Gavin unfortunately has been quite ill uh, recently with uh, cancer but I, th I think he's managed to get through it. He was on with chemotherapy before all this crazy virus stuff started. And uh, so he was actually in self-isolation for six months before. And as his partner Ruth says, uh, yes, they're trendsetters. They were they were doing the isolation thing months before anybody else did it. Now everybody's hopping on the bandwagon. Uh, anyway, this this one's dedicated to you, Gavin Ruth. It's a concertina set. Played solo and accordion. Normally there's a lovely fiddle harmony part, but you'll just have to imagine that. Thank you. 
cosa believe that Toki is still there loving every single note look at that normally he's left long long before now look at me just enjoying being in the sun and wonderful accordion music now um I was wearing black gloves there as uh, Hannibal Smith of course would do but uh, actually a couple of days ago I apologize for the state of my hands I don't know if you can see that but uh, they're actually covered in some black stuff anyway um two days ago they were actually completely black and uh, it's because I was using some of the stickiest stuff known to man. It's, it's Knauf Aqua Panel Joint Sealant. Uh, don't ever use it without some protective gloves. Now I realise why there was a little pack of plastic gloves scrunched up inside the packet. Because it's some of the stickiest stuff. It even beats uh, Expanding Foam. Expanding Foam, I thought, is the stickiest stuff until then. And it can't come off. It's literally, I had to use an oven scour metal oven scouring pad to get the worst of it off. Um, and uh, really, it's it's uh, it's not it's not what you want for playing recording, uh, sticky, really sticky hands. So uh, thankfully, I got most of that off. But it's been a lot of scrubbing, and uh, I can tell you, it's been hard work. In fact, I got another bar of soap this week. You won't believe it. I'm getting soap sent from all over the world. Thank you, Roberta Lasnick from Arlington in uh, Massachusetts, who very kindly <laughs> sent me another bar of pure soap. I love this stuff. Now, um, uh, I was following the uh, guidance from the government for uh, washing your hands uh, every 20 minutes, is it? So um, this is what the bar of soap looks like right now. Uh, it's very small. But anyway, it's been well used, Robert, Roberta, well used. Thank you so much for that. And uh, it still hasn't quite got that black stuff off. Now, I'm going to play you now uh, something very exciting, but not as exciting as the last set. Yes, it's the Gay Gordon set from my new uh, Shandrix album, which is called, um, what is it called? Foxy Laddie. How could I forget that? Foxy Laddie, wonderful photograph uh, of me there, uh, dressed as Jimmy Shandrix, my alter ego, uh, with the burning accordion. Uh, that's what a lot of people would like to do to an accordion, but uh, that is only pretend planes. I didn't really... No accordions were harmed in the making of this album. Anyway, it's my electric Kaylee band, and this is the first set uh, on it. Uh, the photo, by the way, was taken by the fabulous Louis de Carlo. <laughs> Thank you. 
Finally, the big chord they've been waiting weeks to hear. Welcome to the Quarantine Gigs. Yes, it's me, Sandy Breakin, here on episode five, I think. Let me just check my watch. Five. Yes, I'm looking at the hours now. I've marked the hours as weeks now uh, because uh, minutes are absolutely uh, non-essential and even the hours don't seem to matter too much these days. So we're on week five now. Yes, week five, according to my watch, in uh, quarantine lockdown. Thanks very much to Grant Simpson, who came up with the idea for the quarantine gigs here in Edinburgh Toon. As you can see, it's an amazing day. Again, every time that I do the show, it's always uh, blazing. And it's very hot in here and I'm always wearing something stupid and hot. Anyway, that's what you have to do to suffer for your art. By the way, I am suffering all over. Not me, one to sit there in my underpants with uh, the newsreader's shirt and tie on. No, I've got the whole job here. Look at these military style boots and oh, the combat trousers, everything for the Hannibal, the Hannibal Smith look. I have gone the whole hog even with a real cigar, a present from my friend Bedran and a Mayan's wedding from 18 years ago. Yeah, I've been saving this guitar for this very moment. Actually, um, Bedran and Amaya are now uh, living in Malta, um, the fortress, fortress island. What better place to be uh, isolated and, uh, and locked down in a fortress island? I've been to Malta a couple of years ago, actually, for the first time to visit uh, an ex-lodger of mine, Martina, and her little dog who used to live with me before Toki. And whereas Toki is one of the nicest dogs I've ever met, it's never even snarled at anybody. Uh, her little dog, Alvis, was the most evil dog I've ever, ever met, or anybody that I know has ever met, because they've all been bitten by him, all my friends, and even just random people that came to the door. And he is a cross, Alvis. He's a, cr he's a very cross dog. He's a very cross little dog. He's a tiny little dog. He's like a little rat. He's half, um, I was going to say half jalapeno. That's the wrong word. But it's a, he's a half Jack Russell and half, what's that funny little dog? from South America called a, a guinea pig or something. I don't know, he's, he's a crossbreed anyway, and he's got little squint eyes. And he just goes, ah! But actually, the weekend that I went to visit him in Malta, Malta, by the way, has fantastic weather all year round. It's famed for it, if you've never been there. The, the weekend I went there in January to visit uh, happened to be, unluckily, the weekend that it was, the same weekend it was snowing in Athens uh, a few years ago and uh, it was a freak weather and it was absolutely freezing in the island and because it's warm all the time nobody on the island has central heating and i just take two t-shirts and shorts and sunglasses which were no use in keeping you warm oh i forgot to wear the sunglasses where are they oh blossom never mind uh, and uh so the only thing that kept me warm and alive basically was this horrible little dog who bizarrely seemed to have forgotten that he hated me uh, after a couple of years absence and, and hopped up into my lap as soon as I arrived on the island and kept me warm for the whole weekend like a little living uh, hot water bottle. Uh, so that's a nice story, a nice cheering story. By the way, here's another dog. This is a dog called Sandy. Now for those of you interested in getting a pet, Toki's a lovely dog, but this dog is much cheaper you don't have to feed it, water it, you don't have to take it walks, you don't have to pick up its poop. And you know what? I've had just about the same amount of love back from this dog as from Toki. So there we go. There's a message in there, folks. You might not want to waste a lot of money on a live pet because you can get a little stuff on. Also, you can stick it on top of the recording with cello tape and it can be there. A special friend as you're playing. It's very difficult to do that with a live dog, isn't it? Okay, time to move on. We've got lots of exciting sets of music for you in this show just as soon as I remember them. We are going to do, oh I know what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a special tune now for uh, Mikey Wilson, Colonel Mikey Wilson, wonderful chap who is currently in hospital in Oman, the Gulf State of Oman, a place I've visited many times over the years. In fact, I don't mind telling you that I am, as far as I know, the undefeated haggis-eating champion of Oman. Let me just show you something. Yes, this is a signed certificate by the ambassador at the time, 2003, Stuart Lang, which certifies that Sandy Brecon won the Oman Highland Games Haggis Eating event. And here I have the Haggis Eating Champion Medal. It's one of the few medals I've ever won in my life and really still fills me with pride. Yes, it was a Highland Games organised by a very good friend, Gordon McKenzie. Uh, in uh, Muscat, the capital of uh, Oman, and uh, there was all these uh, big 
bodybuilder guys from England and all over the world who were competing in the serious competitions like weightlifting and caber tossing and uh, mallet throwing and whatever else they do. Uh, but they had a silly fun one which was a haggis eating competition and uh, it was me up against all these guys uh, from the strongman team and uh, one of them was going, pointing his fork at me, he's going, I'm going to eat this and then I'm going to eat you, you little squirt. It's like, ah! But anyway, the whistle went off, there was about 200 people watching and I wolfed it down in a matter of seconds and held up the empty giant white plate above my head in a moment very rem reminiscent of Virginia Wade winning Wimbledon in the 1970s when I was a small child in the black and white TV. I loved to watch those two or three channels. And uh, there was roars, roars of appreciation from the crowd. It was one of my favourite moments in my life. And uh, the uh, big strong guys were going, uh, they, were, they barely got started. So there you go. That's just pointless, pointless doing exercises and building yourself up. If you can't eat a haggis, what's the point? What's the point? Anyway, I'm going to do a tune written by the very same uh, Gordon Kenzie who uh, went out to a man to teach the Sultan, who sadly passed away recently, the Sultan's Royal Guard who play the bagpipes on Camelback. I think I mentioned that in a previous <laughs> episode. Uh, absolutely wonderful sight to behold. Anyway, this is a tune that uh, Gordon wrote. Uh, he wrote a very famous tune called The Sands of Kuwait. I think it was after the first Gulf War, I think the second, I can't quite remember. But uh, this is uh, a tune which will one day become just as famous, I'm sure it's for his niece, Katie. It's called Katie McDonald. <laughs>
lovely tune, that's Katie McDonald, which uh, also features on the uh, Jimmy Shandrix Experience album, Foxy Laddie. In fact, that's the very last track. Uh, oh no, it's the previous album, sorry. Yeah, so many. And uh, for that's especially for Mikey Wilson, who's in uh, isolation in hospital in uh, Oban. So, Mikey, hope you get well soon and uh, all the best from Scotchland. Uh, now, speaking of bagpipers and pipey type things, uh, this is a set of tunes which are written for the bagpipes. I'm going to play them accordion. I found my glasses, by the way, as I realised as I was playing that last set. Yes, they're on my head. Yeah, I haven't lost them after all. These are very 1970s and slightly squint. But, because it's so sunny out there, why does this happen? It's the, the, the sunniest spring possibly in decades and we're all inside. Never mind, got to make the most of it. Uh, and so, yeah, these next tunes are written by Pipers. Uh, I'll just have a quick suck on this unlit cigar. Sorry if it's not lit, kids. Um, and uh, it's a tune by, the first tune is by uh, a friend of mine, Mike Katz, who I've not seen for a while. He's got a very big beard. And, uh, and he plays the bagpipes in the bagpool band. A uh, wonderful chap. We used to play uh, badminton together when I was a young student 30 years ago. Uh, that was back in the days when I did sport. Uh, basically, that was once a month of a hangover. That's as, that's as sporty as I got then, and, uh, and I'm even less sporty now. <laughs> uh, and Mike and myself would uh, batter a shuttlecock back and forth of a morning uh, in Me uh, Meadowbank, Meadowbank Stadium, yeah. Anyway, uh, he went on to become uh, the piper in the battle band and uh, a great composer, great player, and this is a tune of his called Tate. That's followed by uh, an old pipe tune called The Chow Man, wonderful name for a tune. All these tunes have got great names. Uh, and uh, it was uh, composed uh, in uh, while well, the Scots Guards were being toured of China, I think, coincidentally, uh, in the 1920s. Uh, here we go, Tates and the Chow Man.
Oh man. Yeah, she takes came back to me eventually, uh, halfway through the tune. Uh, I really should really practice these things. Uh, welcome to the C team. Yes, this is Sandy Bacon uh, acting today as Hannibal Smith from the A team, but we're not even the B team here. We are the C team here at Bacon Towers. Uh, yes, because uh, I, like uh, many other musicians, are, I'm reduced to now performing from my own living room. Yes, it's even happened to the likes of the Rolling Stones and Elton John, these poor folk forced to make a, a video and send out last night to the watching world. Uh, and uh, I'm doing the same thing. Uh, and if you're enjoying it, there's a little uh, PayPal B thing somewhere around there that uh, means you can make an instant tip. Yes. Uh, I, I could buy more cigars. Um, I, I promise I won't smoke them. Uh, generous donations between one and five pence uh, or any other uh, sum that you would like to send. Gratefully uh, appreciate it. Now, what's next? Well, any chance to stick on uh, the sailor's hat once again? Yes, yeah, so we need to take the sunglasses off this because coming up now is a set of iron horn pipes. Now that just looks definitely not right with the little negative as well. Never mind, I haven't got time to take it off. Uh, I'm just going to have to man up and get on with this. This is a set of horn pipes, a wonderful horn pipe called the High Level Horn Pipe, which was written by James Hill, who uh, everybody in uh, the north of England holds up as one of the great fiddle players from history. Uh, uh, from from uh, Newcastle uh, or South Shields, uh, as you call it. I can't remember. Anyway, uh, that, that sort of general uh, Newcastle area, and uh, and he was indeed a great fiddle player and a great composer, uh, famous for his horn pipes, of which the high level is one of many. Uh, but turns out he was actually born in Scotland. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes, he was Scottish after all. Uh, so anyway, here's a tune by the wonderful James Hill whether uh, you think he's from Newcastle or somewhere near Dumfries or Aberdeen is still in, uh, up in, uh, it's still a bit dubious where you can come exactly. Um, it's called the New High Level Hornpipe and that's followed by the Saratoga Hornpipe. <laughs> Thank you. 
Tricky set there. Uh, yes, these tune, two of these tunes are in B flat, which uh, anybody that plays keyboards will tell you are, are not the nicest keys to play on. Uh, I forgot to tell you the name of the last tune. There was a third tune, a surprise tune at the end of that set called President Garfield, uh, one of the few, I think four, only four uh, pre American presidents to be assassinated, and uh, as far as I know, the only American president to also be a cartoon cat, President Garfield. Uh, yes, I almost lost it in the middle, at the beginning of uh, the middle tune there, um, and uh, yeah, that's what happens when you don't have sessions to play anymore every week. Normally I have a couple of sessions, uh, one in the Black Cat, uh, Tom and Rose Street on Wednesday nights with uh, Ewan Wilkinson. Here is me and Ewan on our uh, most recent albums, which is called Hard Times Come and Go. We should have just called it Hard Times, uh, but of course you can't predict the future. And there's us on the back. Uh, as you can see, the tide is coming in and we just about got washed away. That's how long you have to stand for a photo shoot to get a good shot, well, particularly if you look like me and you and do. Uh, anyway, that's uh, the, the set of horn pipes that's on that album. If anybody wants to buy it, you can go to beacon-all-records.com. It just trips off the tongue. And uh, you can go to the shop there and you can buy one. And I can uh, run to the post office on a, 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 an urgent mission uh, and post it to you and, and maybe get some messages at the same time. Uh, and uh, what was I talking about there? Oh, I've completely forgotten. Oh, yes, uh, I, was, I was going to lead on nicely uh, to the other session that I do, which is the Sunday night session, which I've been doing for 25 years, believe it or not, uh, off and on. Uh, in the Ensign Yurt, which is the name of the, the pub, the Ensign Yurt, at the top of the Royal Mile, uh, just before you get to the castle. And uh, Ensign Yurt, uh, Ensign is rank, and it was given to uh, Charles Yurt, uh, a promotion uh, in, uh, as a reward for his capturing of the French standard, uh, the Imperial Eagle. It's a big uh, golden eagle with the French flag hanging off it on a big stick, uh, which he captured in the Battle of Waterloo. And uh, it was a great, it was a great, great uh, shame to the French nation to have their, their battle standard stolen by uh, Ensign Ewart. And even though he was quite simply a thief, uh, they have honoured him in true Scottish style by um, naming a pub after him at the top of the Royal Mile. And I've been playing there for 25 uh, years. It's incredible. Uh, until recently. Uh, yeah, this is the only thing that's finally stopped it. Uh, hopefully, only temporarily. And uh, this is a set uh, that I play in the Ensign Ewart. And it's, uh, it's called the Ensign Live Set because we played it live in the uh, pub, uh, recorded it. There's what the Ensign Newark looks like and that's the, the album that appears on the Sunday night sessions. So that's when we normally there. We'd normally be there tonight, so uh, kind of missing it, missing seeing all my friends, missing playing the same old tunes I've been playing for 25 years and missing those pints of beer, which I hear sadly this week are many ga millions of gallons of beer are going to be uh, poured down the sink because all these uh, pubs with all their stock it's only got a shelf life or lager of three or four months apparently and, and uh, real ale is even less than that so it has to be poured down the sink tragic tragic if only there was some way of piping it down here to bring in all powers uh, never mind we'll try and work that out for next week before it all gets uh, thrown down the, the royal mile gutters and big gutters they are in the royal mile old-fashioned ones to carry all the yeah it wasn't just beer they carried in the old days yeah um, now, uh, what was I going to say? Oh yes, we're going to play the Ensign New York set. Uh, so this uh, last tune in it is one I wrote called um, The Imperial Eagle, after the, the said eagle that, uh, that was nicked by Charles York. And uh, the first tune is uh, The Road to Banff, which was written by uh, a wonderful chap uh, I know called Malcolm Weevil, flute player. And the middle tune is Leaving Off Boys Deal, it's supposed to be a slow air, but I played it, played it as a nice perky jig, and why not? Thank you. 
set, the Ensign set. Yes, the Ensign York uh, no longer, uh, sadly, but for many of those 25 years was uh, run by Brian McCann, uh, a wonderful chap who put up with a lot of my uh, shenanigans <laughs> over the years and my friend. But uh, it was qu quite an interesting character himself. Uh, he, he uh, at one point, was getting tired of all the tourists coming in, uh, coming down from the castle and just coming in to use the toilets in the Ensign York pub uh, without buying a drink. And so eventually uh, he got so annoyed about this that he decided to put electronic uh, key coded locks on the, both the male and female toilet doors. So you had to pinch it, punch in a little four digit code into the keypad outside the toilet to be able to use it. And you could only get the code if you went to the bar and ordered a drink. I'm absolutely serious. He was in all the uh, national newspapers with us at the time and uh, so I wrote uh, on the, in very small letters, you can't actually see it, but uh, on the uh, on the sign there which normally says fine ales and, and folk music and all that there, on the actual album it says welcome to Edinburgh, you'll have had your pee, uh, because you couldn't actually get in for a pee unless you bought a drink and uh, it's not as if the code was something that you could remember and pass around because it got changed every week. Uh, 1314 was the uh, the original one. Uh, yes, the English would never have guessed that one, would they? Back over Bannockburn. Ha ha! Um, now, we've got time for only... Oh my god, we've got time for nothing. Uh, one minute, one minute. What can I play? Uh, I can play something very quick. I'll play the first line of The Mouth of the Tabeek. <laughs> We have to play it faster. Second line. Ah, thirty seconds. Third line. So raise your hands, and there we are, we made it just in time. Thank you for joining me, Sandy Brookin and Sandy the dog and Toki, who's no longer with us, uh, for the sheet. Oh no, he's here! He's here! Toki, thank you! You've made it to the end of the show. Here we are, Sandy and Toki and Sandy. Uh, you've been watching the C Team. Don't forget to generate, uh, generate, generously donate to the PayPal link somewhere on there. I might actually like this next one. Goodbye.